Hey, what's up, folks, and welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week, Mr. Pedro. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, Creative Tech here at Adafruit. Every week, we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This year, we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's jump right into the show. This week's coupon code is BLUEFRUIT. The chat's disabled for the live stream. <laughs> well, that's going to mess up the whole show. And so we're hanging out in the uh, YouTube chat. We were. Uh, somehow it's blocked. And then uh, we also have Discord. That's why we have this chat. 24-7. Best Discord server, in my opinion, as I'm biased. Uh, uh, so check it out. It's working on my end. Yeah, I know. That's Continue. why I'm like, OK, whatever. Continue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to hang out in the Discord chat room. We're gonna, and we're not going to go to YouTube, because whatever reason. So let's jump right into this week's freebies. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the different tiers that we have going on. <laughs> and uh, check out the website. I have a link over here. So you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the different tiers. We were giving away um, free uh, Blinka stickers for the whole month of September. We ran out of those. It is now October, so we got a whole new set here. It's back to kind of the, um, the classic freebies. So for orders that are $99 or more, we get an Adafruit Perma Proto half-sized breadboard. For orders that are 200 or more, free UPS ground shipping plus the, uh, the Perma Proto, that's the half-size one. And then for orders that are $299 or more, we can do a Circuit Playground Express, the free shipping, and of course, the Perma Proto that's half-sized. So those are the three tiers. Check them out. They automatically get added to your order. And if you want to check out anything today, please use coupon code BLUEFRUIT as that is our coupon code. Blue fruit. Cool. This week we have a very fun project, so check out the Learn system. Go to, actually let's, let's uh, do a real quick uh, housekeeping. Adabox.com, check it out. We have a new uh, counter at the top that tells you how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds are left to, uh, to get into the Adabox subscription. So check that out. Hopefully that entices you to, uh, to get in there because only 53 days, are you kidding me? That's like tomorrow. So check it out, adabox.com and uh, sign, sign up, please. You cannot use coupon code BLUEFRUIT with uh, subscriptions or gift certificates. Thought I'd let people know that one. All right, how's everybody doing in the Discord chat room? We Shout right. out to <laughs> everyone hanging out in the chat room. We got yeah. Thomas Veach hanging out. Hey, Thomas Veach. We got, we got Andrew, Andy Calloway hanging out as well. Hello. We got uh, Dahansia. Duester. Hanging out in the Facebook chat. Yeah, Facebook Thank you chats all too. for hey, hanging out. All. Cool. Be sure to check out the Discord. We got the invite link for you at discordgg slash Adafruit. I just want to give a shout out to the Halloween uh -huh. playlist. It looks like we have over a hundred projects. Over 100. Perfect for Halloween. It's almost the middle of the month, so time is running out. As you mentioned before earlier, you definitely got to start on those <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. So we got a ton of really cool ideas, super fun, easy ones that you can just stick eyes into, which we will cover a little bit later in the episode. Yeah. But let's go ahead and cover this week's project video. Are we ready for that? Yeah, of course. Everybody so was asking when we did that sweet time lapse with the dry ice, how we did that cauldron. Yeah. And then requested from PT, he wanted a blue fruit CPX in there with slime. Give it all the garnishes yeah. of making it yeah. a nice Halloween it project. It was his suggestion. Hey, do that and, uh, and add some slime. Big shout out to Nick Dimelo, also known as Bugman underscore 140. He created a, uh, a mini cauldron as well. Um, and then we had the idea, let's, let's kind of make it optimized for mm -hmm. the circuit playground so you can actually mount it to the yeah. circuit playground. It'll have snap fit bits. And uh, that's what we came mm -hmm. up with. So <laughs> we have a big one in this moment. So this is the one um, that we kind of first worked on little cauldron inside there you have the circuit player and express that's snap fitted into the special mount you have enough room in the bottom for a battery or or uh or micro usb as you can see here you have a hole for it you got these nice little four legs that keep it up there nice and straight and uh this little snap fit cover here will make it so that you can add another let's say uh a little piece of uh, like an appetizer cup here a little bit of dry ice there and that fits in there and uh, it's nice and sturdy so we'll be moving around in there. So uh, we got some, some warm water. Yeah, let's and, go ahead uh, and do some, let's do some cooking on the show. Some live cooking, what happens. here we go. So we're gonna add some Ooh. hot water to our dry ice. 
And you got that. So the code here running is uh, all circuit Python. You can use the color, pico, color picker demo Ooh. with the Blue Fruit Connect app. So you can use an iOS device or an Android device uh, to change up the color. In this example, we are using uh, just some code here. Uh, it's also CircuitPython, just to cycle through three different colors. And it's using uh, the nonlinear impolation stuff to make this really nice glowy effect. And uh, you, can, you can get that code um, from the learn guide. So check it out. This effect lasts about a minute, depending on how much water you have and uh, how much dry ice you have, right? So this is great for like a little effect here, and it's nice and cool, right? Yeah, the we popular to... thing seems to be to add like a smoke device and all that, but that seems to be a little bit, you know, clunky and uh, big and large in terms of having battery and having your heating element and all that. Yeah, this is definitely the simplest, uh, smallest way to add fog very heavy, thick fog to your projects. Yay. It lasts a little bit longer than a minute. We were just uh, saying the optimal, like crazy yeah. amount of smoke effects lasts about a minute. Right. After that, it lasts about five minutes as it like sort of just boils there, which is uh, plenty enough time to get some really good effects for video, or if you're doing a little haunted house or whatnot, uh, you can upgrade to the giant one and have it last a couple minutes longer. Yeah, I haven't actually so this is a bigger one. We thought, hey, let's make a big one because this is a small one. It's cute. So we, uh, we didn't just scale it up. We redesigned it so that it's, it has the same shell. It's a one and a half millimeter shell. Uh, we just made the, the features a little bit bigger. So you still have the Circuit Playground in here. This is the Blue Fruit Edition that's in there. It's, it's rather small compared to the rest of it, but you still have some sort of element here that's kind of glowing. Um, so it's huge. It only fits on really, really big printers. It won't even fit on the S. Wait, it did fit on the S5. This was printed on the S5. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like with this in here. We actually have not tested what this no, fog looks like. And that's in a, bigger a one. very, very small uh, container for it, mm -hmm. but that's it's looking pretty good there. It looks pretty dang cool. Wow. Let's see if I can get this up in there. Whoa. Yeah. So there's our witch's brew. Ooh. Very cool. And I get that cool smoke rising effect. We're just using our mouths to blow right into it. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, you know, you could probably rework this if you want to do something really elaborate where you wanted to put actual candy in there. We were thinking really out there, like, how do we make this the most complicated thing that we'll never be able to build? Well, uh, we figured to keep it simple. So that's why we didn't put an extra layer here for, like, holding candy or something. It's more of a, hey, here's some fog. Very cool. Um, but you could use the container for other things. Maybe you just want to add candy to it or you want to rework it into something more elaborate, like I was saying, something that would have smoke. Um, I know a couple of folks out there that are making some really cool ones that have like this whole uh, setup with sound effects and lights and all that. Starting off with something like a circuit playground, I think is a good kind of safe bet to kind of, let's start with that. Let me get some light in here and then work from there. So that's cool. Um, real quick, let me kind of walk through the assembly or kind of how it works. So this is actually two pieces that are screwed together. So it has some internal threads. So this piece here is designed to just screw out like that. That way you have more access to the actual electronics. So here we just have the Circuit Player and Express. Again, this is really great because you don't have to solder anything, right? NeoPixels are built in. It has an accelerometer. It has uh, audio out as well. It's got buttons on it. It's got a temperature sensor, light sensor. Too much stuff, right? <laughs> I'm just barely using 1% of what the Circuit Player can do. But uh, for something like this, I think it works pretty well. Um, these little tabs here hold it in place. I, I love doing that with circular PCBs. And then uh, you have these little nubs here that go uh, diagonal, so that way you can uh, easily pop it in and out. And I just use my thumbs to kind of pop that out. There's a little battery, you can fit the battery in there. You have this completely open, so if you wanted to add a really big battery in there, you could have it housed down here somewhere, which is kind of neat. So the way uh, it is assembled, you just pop this in there, and that snaps right there like that. It's a nice, satisfying click. So now that's in there, it's not coming out. And uh, there. So to protect um, this from water, <laughs> uh, I ha this lid actually goes out. So this snap fits. There's two little tabs here. The snap, fit it. And you can see we have the, the, the little USB hole right there. And that if you look kind of carefully, and there's like a little lip there. So if any water spills, it's actually going to go on the outside and not even touch the circuit playground. So that's really nice there. So in case you do have a little spillage, that works pretty well. So this prints without any support material. It's got these little handles. Maybe you can add some rings or something to it, or maybe have it dangling or something. Um, and then, of course, this guy just snap fits. This is printed in a translucent filament. Well, because we want to let the light show through, 
So that's why we do that. I want to make sure that I line up this notch here with the USB in there. So that's the only thing you want to do there. I like to add it like that. And then you just kind of press it down until it clicks into place. There we go. That way you have a nice flat surface so you could put whatever container in there. In the learn guide, I, I document exactly what the dimensions are for fitting a container in there. And then this screws in like that. The threading is about two revolutions. Yeah. And that way you want to make sure your USB port is right there so you can still access it. So I'll do that here. I really like this USB cable. It's fully reversible micro USB. It's one of our favorite cables. And it's purple-ish, pinkish. Vroom. So this is running circuit Python. So when I uh, plug this into a computer, the code is right there. The libraries are right there. Easy to change, easy to maintain. Um, so there we go. Looking cool. And we still got dry ice going on in there. Woo. Set this guy up. Explode with smoke. Yeah. yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. That's so much. That's really neat. Um, so where you can get dry ice here in the States, it's relatively easy to get it in your, or your, your local grocery supermarket. The other place I suggest is like a bait tackle shop. So it's like where you fish, yeah, where you like get bait for fishing. Um, there should be a, like a bunch of like dry ice there. To yeah, keep do a little bit of research. Look up uh, what cold. kind of different places. You wouldn't think something like a bait shop would have dry ice, but for bait and stuff, <laughs> mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. Pretty cool. And if you are, um, you, you might not have, if you still can't find dry ice, de definitely check out atomizers or humidifiers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of humidifiers on Amazon, for example, that have built-in lights, and they basically just take water and create um, vapor out of it. And one thing I to completely forgot about, too, you can actually get this stuff in a can. It's for oh, lighting right. effects for uh, cinematography. You can actually get, I think it's like haze in a can. We have it somewhere in the garage, but you can get a uh, yeah. smoke type effect. Uh, you know, spray yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> I forget the name of it. I'll uh, post it <laughs> later cool. today somewhere. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll probably add it to the guide as mm -hmm. I find more resources. Cool. That actually might be a really cool way if they like sell like small ones that can fit inside of an object and have like a little servo that would just push <laughs> down on it. Right, yeah. That'd be a really cool way to do yeah, it. Yeah, like your drone bot that, that spray oh, paints. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, it makes clouds. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Let's Another jump into the learn guide. Another thing that I'd like to add to oh, this sure. too would be like the, the pneumatic pumps that we have. Oh, so we the, can take pump out, yeah. out the cold water because as you can see, as it freezes the water, the smoke effect stops going. Yeah, this project is dying for over-engineering. So somebody please do that. <laughs> yeah, Automate the, the system. Yeah. So we can keep it going for the show. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I mean, it's, I'll hot, it, it's, it's uh, October, so of course we're gonna yeah. have smoke going on. Yeah, everywhere. now that we have like this nice <laughs> platform, the, the little snap fit threaded sign, we can focus on how do we automate the fog and make that more mm -hmm. over engineered? <laughs> that, that'd be great. Let's do that. So Sounds like a maybe next, for next year, year. Yeah, next year we'll have some really cool. This is the first time playing with dry ice and, and, and adding it to a project like that. The, the first time was, uh, like I said, the humidifier. That was a lot of fun, but it didn't. It just doesn't create enough smoke like this. It just can't. <laughs> this is crazy, really thick smoke. So there we go. All right, jumping into the learn guide. Let's check out the learn guide. Here we go. We got a learn guide. This houses all of the uh, the files and any of the code. So we're using the blue fruit, of course. Really nice way to uh, to wirelessly change the colors of your blue fruit. And check out the blue fruit. It is currently in stock. You can use our coupon code and get 10% uh, off your order on that. 26 left in stack. So uh, get on that one. It's got all the stuff you know and love about the Circuit Playground Express, but now with the Blue Fruit with the NRF52A40 chipset. So it's got more RAM. You can do some cool stuff with the gizmo as well, but let's keep, uh, let's keep our focus here on, <laughs> on this project. Um, let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Here's some stuff. Um, dry ice, appetizer cup. We're using glow-in-the-dark putty. Uh, instead of like regular slime, because we wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, some other things like super glue and tongs. We'll talk about the super glue here in a minute. These are all the parts that I use in the project. Again, Circuit Playground is in stock. Uh, I really like this fully reversible micro USB cable. It's a data cable, it works really well. And take also note, these batteries. Yeah. Take note that the longer one is not fully reversible. Yeah, make sure it says fully reversible. So there you go. 
Um, and then the 500 milliamp battery is what I'm using. You could use a bigger one, but that's the one we got. It's out of stock, so maybe pick a bigger battery if you want, or plan for, for powering over USB, which I prefer. We got some filaments and some printers in stock as well. Check this out. Let's head over to the printing part. Um, so the, pr the parts, the STLs are ready to download and they're ready to slice as is. The I already orient them for you guys. No support material required for them. You can use your own slice settings, play around with different filaments as well. Um, we also have the Fusion 360 share link. That's just if you want to modify the original Fusion 360 design. It is available as a step file, which is a great open format for all of the solid work, solid modeling type of apps. Um, so check out the step file if you use Blender or Maya or something else like that. On shape, it's another one. SolidWorks, another one. I can go for days. Don't forget Cinema 4D. Um, snap fit mount. Uh, that's what the mount looks like. It doesn't require any uh, any support either. Top cover. You probably want to use some white translucent filament so that your light from your circuit player can shine through the bottom. I made a little CAD assembly animation. These are fun to make, but also challenging because it's like, how do I show the best assembly of it? I'm not too happy with it, but it's what it is. Um, you can see the circuit player ground gets uh, snap fitted into a little purple mount, and then the purple mount gets super glued to the bottom half of the cauldron. The uh, circuit playground mount has the thread, the external threads that screw right into the internal threads of the bowl of the cauldron. So that's the way those two snap fit. This is really fun. I wasn't planning to make this. I call it the container size dimensions. It, it's, a, it's a cross section of the CAD drawing. Uh, that way you can see inside and see how much um, room you have. So I did some measurements in Fusion 360 and it's uh, 72 millimeters or 2.8 inches uh, as a diameter. And then uh, the tallness is 48 millimeters, which is 1.8 inches. So you can use that. And you can completely design, uh, redesign it. All the solids are there for, uh, for tweaking. All the sketches are there for tweaking as well. If you like using Fusion or if you like some other app, check out the, the step file. Um, we have all of our Adafruit CAD models available in a GitHub repository. Check that out. You can uh, fork it. Um, and uh, yeah, I saw somebody on Instagram tag me. He's like, oh my god, it's amazing. They had every single drawing <laughs> from, from the repo and they had imported Ooh. it into their project. And I was like, wow, I've never seen anyone do that. So shout out to you, sir. And then uh, this piece talks about the parts that you need to glue. There is some to avoid support materials. Uh, I split the bottom half and the circuit playground mount so that they can be printed without any support. So I just cut that right down the middle and then I added these two circles, these two mounting holes, more for registration. You could use screws, but no, nah, I'm going to use super glue because I don't plan to take it apart. Why waste screws on it? Those holes are mainly for uh, registering, making sure they're um, properly lined up. So I thought that was good. I like the super glue. Check it out. It's from Starbond. It has a fine precision tip, so you can really add it to edges and things, but not a lot of glue needed. Just for those two pieces here, the, the bottom half of the cauldron and the CPX mount. So those two get super glued together. Let's see, what else am I talking about here? Um, installing the PCB, we got that oriented at an angle, make sure the USB port is facing the little notches. A lot of little design details in there to, uh, to make sure that uh, all the wires and, and possible use cases are accounted for. Cool. How to snap fit the top cover. You got your USB notch, installing the bowl, make sure you have your hole is lined up with the micro USB port. And that's it, that's, uh, that's really simple. Heading over to the software, this one walks you through setting up Circuit Python with Bluefruit, the alpha edition. So check it out. Um, we're using the Moo Python editor um, to, to upload the code, I guess. Now, to check the, the serial monitor, because it has a built-in serial monitor. Moo's the best editor, it's simple. And, and lightweight. So if you are new to Python editing, check out the Moo editor. I have a link there. We also have a learn guide on how to install it. It's pretty straightforward. We have a quick start on uh, how to get your Circuit Playground Express with the latest version of Circuit Python. Sorry, I had to I need to change that to say Bluefruit, not Express. But for the most part, it does say download the latest version. Yep, this will take you to circuitpython.org, which is the best place to get your latest version of Circuit Python. I definitely suggest using the alpha version, this one here, the alpha 4, circuit by the 5. It's got all the latest libraries in there. So you can just download that, drop it right into your, your, your boot drive, and uh, it'll flash itself. 
We've got two libraries here for uh, doing the Bluetooth connection. We have a BLE library that's done in CircuitPython and the Bluefruit Connect, which ties into the Bluefruit uh, iOS and Android app. And those are the only two libraries you need. And then here's the color picker code that is, uh, has its own GitHub. And it's using um, the Bluefruit Connect library and the BLE library. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. OK. Uh, so that, that covers the software part of it. Going down to the slimy, <laughs> the foggy slime, uh, just a note here on the type of slime we're using. It's more of a putty. It, it doesn't run a lot. It's not very uh, moist. It doesn't have like, it's mm -hmm. not wet. It won't leave any. Uh, if you things. do want that look, that we should have linked the past project where we did That's make right. that yeah. DIY slime. That's right. We can it make does have those characteristics. You can have it dripping if it. Uh, matches the theme of your character, like if it's like a um, zombie that's like bleeding or something like Ooh. that. Uh, yeah. But this is more of stationary type of putty that'll keep its shape. Yeah, it's, it slowly longer. drips over time. Mm -hmm. and you can mold it's it. It's more uh, stiff. Yeah, it's very more stiff. It's like wax. Yeah. Um, which looks great here on the edge of the rim here. Yeah. Very Talk about dry ice. It. This is notes. Use some ice tongs to handle it. You mm -hmm. want to use um, some sort of container that has a pouring spout. That way, the water doesn't drip. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and there you go. You want to have black light set up around your perimeter so you can get that very nice glow. Yeah. Or set your colors to a purple. Yeah. Does a really good job on that. Sweet. A little bit more water. Go back to the, and back over to Keep the that guy going. Woo! <laughs> How's everyone in the chat doing? Any questions or anything? Somebody's asking a question. I don't know what it means. Is there a way to light the circuit player on Express from the average light displayed from a video stream in real time? Hmm. This is from uh, AAA on Facebook. Uh, can you clarify that? I don't Ask it in Discord. I'm sure some, some folks will uh, have some fun answers. And Andy Kelly saying it has to be purple and green, the hue of Halloween. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like how that uh, rhymes. Yeah. All right, Sweet. cool. Let's go ahead and is that it? Got to is that touched it? all the points. <laughs> I on think that. we touched all the points. Yeah. Um, it's it's really straightforward. If you can get access to dry ice, definitely check it out. It's relatively safe to play with as long as you're you're cautious of how you touch it, handle it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, Yanni is saying is uh, you can pipe the smoke in with a pipe and have like programmed like a fan or something that's like a PWM awesome. or something yeah, that like turns it on and off. Yes, that's that is, definitely next year's that is project. Next year's yeah, project, where we really automate this mm -hmm. and work with our, with our, maybe it's a cricket based thing. It's yeah, gotta have sound effects, yeah. it's gotta have Blue a fan. Blue fruit. Yeah. Blue fruit cricket. I really want it to be all circuit nice. python. Huh. Yeah, that'd be really awesome. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just setting up the, uh, the, uh, the baseline for We had to do this, this in like less than a week. And I was like, all right, yeah. okay, I'll let's design this in a day. <laughs> All right, cool. So there you go, guys. Have a simple, easy way to add foggy smoke to your Halloween-themed set. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and jump into what we're prototyping. OK, uh, real quick, don't forget, Circuit Playground is in stock, the Bluefruit edition, with coupon code BLUEFRUIT. You can get 10% off that. Yay. Yeah. All right, let me steal some power here. Sure. Or is there another battery down over there somewhere? No, nah, you're fine. You could take out this one or this one. All right, another cool. Or no, not another. Let's jump into this week's prototyping, but don't forget coupon code BLUEFRUIT to get 10% off your order. Works on everything except gift certificates and subscriptions. That's right. And so over the week, uh, PT was saying, hey, why don't we do some holograms with like the Pi portal? Mm -hmm. You got tap screen. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, so these are little um, kind of plastic foldable Pyramids? Yeah, this is what's commonly used for doing those holographics. And oh, wow, it looks like we didn't peel one of the. Oh, that's fun. The, uh, the screens Protective, off. Uh, what? So it probably things. looks much even, cleaner. Yeah, much cleaner. Yeah, so Whoa, it's a little suction yeah. cup that goes in the center of the screen. You have to treat your graphics a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, four of them on each side, nothing in the center. That way you can reflect it mm -hmm. uh, with this hologram. I've never really played with any of these or, or looked into them. Yeah, now. I didn't even think this was going to work. You can get a pack of them f like for like $7 or something on Amazon. Yeah. I think so, uh, Mars creating something where it, it's, I suppose, a base. Maybe we put it inside a crystal ball and we do Yeah, Madame, that's actually what we wanted to ask Madame, the, what's her name uh, the from folks. The uh, 
in looking for what hologram props are used in movies, uh, one of the two things that came up was the Star Wars hollow disc, mm -hmm. or just like a spooky ghost used in like those crystal balls. Yeah. So one of those should make a nice yeah, uh, prototype. project for that. Let's see how it works. Yeah, it kind of works. Yeah, so it definitely kind of works. Um, I think this would work better with a Pi Portal Titano, maybe? Sure. Like a bigger screen, bigger screen. Pi Portal, okay. but it definitely you are able to get a nice image out of the uh, regular size pipe portal. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's running, uh, it's running <laughs> the Arcada uh, GIF player, yeah. which is uh, a really quick way to um, load some GIFs onto this, Q po this Q, uh, Q spy flash on the pipe portal and uh, just, just tap to, uh, to advance. So you can have so a cool. list of GIFs. Even though it is tiny, it looks so yeah, cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I she's blinking. Oh, it's yeah, It's a yeah. GIF. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's a gift. She, she could look, be moving. She could be blinking. Her, uh, little her eye, tongue could be moving if you wanted. Tongue. Yeah, the tongue's moving. Uh, let now. me do some. I haven't even opened a webcam. If I settings. go over to the uh, heads up, you can see how the graphics are being created to sort of create that fake 3D effect. It's just uh, orthographic uh, Hold it still drawings for a of there we Blinka. Go. I got it in focus now. Check it out. It's just that glare now we have to work with. Yeah. Yeah, so there's cool. Blinka. Nice little simple way to set up your graphics, and then this just plops right into the middle. And if you angle your display so you can't see the bottom of it, that's how you'll get that 3D look. Dang it, I'm gonna take off all those, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, protective screen protector things. things on there. I did not realize I had them all on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes and, it blurry, huh? Yeah, it definitely yeah. makes it look a lot more clear. Cool. And the right lighting conditions would make this look really cool. Yeah, when there's like light shining onto it. Yeah. Let's make it look really see-through. So this is just a literally a first. I just got it working last night. Yeah, <laughs> super cool. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for, oh yeah, there's a good one. Doing a uh, HUD heads-up display inside mm -hmm. the Tesla, that would be really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we're just gonna mount it, right? Yeah. Very cool. All right, so that's what the, one of the prototypes. We got another prototype. Uh, this is this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, we got this, uh, this, uh, the Skull Candy Bowl from Taggett, which is the store here in the States. And uh, it's a fairly, fairly big uh, candy bowl. And what's really good about this candy bowl is it's got a great assembly. It, you can, it uses screws and you can take it apart. Uh, so this is the front half of, it, of the candy bowl. And <laughs> we fit the monster mask in here. So uh, we have some pieces of foam core here, some hot glue batteries over here on the inside and uh, we're using the uh, the nine pin JSTSH connector to uh, to connect to separate our eyes and, and, and connect them back together so I have access here to micro USB port and uh, the on off switch let's go ahead and turn it on and off so I drilled out the eyes and uh, added some of this foam core here um, and uh, pressed it in there so it has a little cutout for the screen and then these are pieces of uh, EVA foam that have these little circles that are cut into it so you can see it. So you can make a really neat uh, pair of eyes, of course, with monster mask and add them to this candy bowl. So we can, uh, we can make a really sweet candy bowl or maybe it's a mask. <laughs> and you could add the speaker and stuff to it as well, which is really neat. That looks really nice. Um, so this is a really nice candy bowl from Taggett. It's like 20 bucks. And uh, here's the other half of it. You might remember this candy bowl uh, from last year or maybe earlier this week. This is uh, where it goes. It doesn't fit all the way in because uh, you really want to be careful how, uh, how much material you remove. Um, you want to make sure that's nice and flat. Some hot glue there. And uh, this is a, uh, it's like a three, it's like a four piece design here. So you have the, the front face here that comes off. This bowl here can come off as well. It's watertight. So what we did here last year, maybe the year before, is we used this humidifier. So maybe you don't have access to dry ice. Maybe you can't get dry ice. Well, maybe you can get a humidifier. It's called the Atomizer. It's got built-in LEDs. And uh, basically, you just fill, it, fill this up with water. I drilled out a hole here, and it comes with a little uh, water-tight plug that you can plug in there. I have the cable coming out here on the back of the bowl. I drilled out a little hole in the back of the bowl. Really, really easy to work with this plastic. I believe it's ABS. And I made a notch here for the cable and also added that hot glue. It's already ha it already has color and it, here are the screw holes so you can unscrew this. Um, I think I just need to 
eat away a little bit more at the eye socket so that I can actually get this back together. But if not, I could just have it like that and that'll look cool. Another cool thing is we could stick a circuit playground underneath it and just have it lit up all the way. Or plug in some external NeoPixels here and then have a, a NeoPixel ring or a NeoPixel strip, however elaborate you want to go. And uh, you can have fog coming out of here or just use it as the candy bowl itself and then kids come in here and pick, pick out his brains. So that is really neat. Again, this is a, a, a candy bowl skull we got from Target. It's kind of a bigger sized uh, skull. That's why I had to um, add these extra bigger uh, pieces here to cover up some of the light. You can see there, just barely can see some of that light there. So you want to make sure your, your eye sockets are a little bit more tighter than I have here. And uh, man, these, these screens, these IPS screens are so nice. Um, I didn't put any of the, uh, the glass or plastic lenses because uh, it just looks good like that. I think that would ruin some of the angle, the viewing angle. So it's pretty neat. Again, foam core and ABA foam. No 3D printing, just a, a Dremel tool and hot glue. So if you don't want to 3D print something, don't. Get an existing prop and modify it. Put these, these are my little template for the, for the eyes. I use a little thing here. Let's look at that actually. How did I do this? Uh, there you go. So uh, I started by drilling a hole out with, uh, with the drill. And then uh, I, don't, I don't even think I need this cutoff wheel here for the Dremel. I could have just swap, uh, swapped out the, um, the drill for more of a, a sanding bit and then just kind of cut it away. Is it playing audio? No, it's just the sound of um, dry ice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a little cutoff wheel. It's kind of close quarters in there. It's very tight in there. So you want to probably use a drill more and then just kind of eat away at the sockets as you're drilling them out. Be careful, obviously. I'm doing this in the garage. A lot of plastic bits. Yeah, you want to avoid the melted plastic. So that's it. Yep, drilling the holes out. And a uh, little cutoff wheel here. Are you looking for some links or something? No, 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 no. Um, Arish was asking what programming language. It's kind of weird. It's like CircuitPython and Arduino, isn't it? Uh, which the one? Eyeballs, which program? The yeah, Monster I Mask. Yeah, it's mostly Arduino, yeah. And using tiny USB for the file system to be able to access the, the file, the, the, QPy, the QSpy flash. Yeah, so uh, a couple different tool heads here, a nice uh, kind of sanding bit to, to smooth out those edges there and to kind of get it as flat as possible. So uh, that was a lot of fun. I like cutting stuff. Yeah, so just test fitting it there. Kind of smooth it out a little bit. <laughs> there I am with the putting it on my face. Yeah, so this is running the hollow wing. I was thinking maybe I just put one eye and then have like a pirate patch. And uh, we're going to talk about this code from John Sampson in a minute here. But that's it. Now it's relooping. So there we go. That's uh, just a quick look behind the scenes of me cutting this guy up. <laughs> and it's watching me. Okay, you gave me life. Thank you. So there you go. Looks like uh, DigiKey has some monster masks in stock. Just posted a link in the YouTube. Excellent. So check out, shout out to DigiKey. Awesome company. Great partnership. Um, yes, sir. Dooster is asking how to rotate the eyes. We added some rotation code. Yes. In the antenna yes, uh, section of the right. learn guide. It's also been, the learn guide gets updated. Yeah, so definitely like check back for that. So. Especially when new code or new um, new languages are added, like when everything was Arduino, mm -hmm. we started adding CircuitPython. We had somebody that went through every single guide and added CircuitPython code to that. I'm just trying to dig it out here. It's definitely in one of these sections. Um, sizes and shapes. Search. I thought it was in the antenna guide. Right, but it should also oh, be listed back. here as well. Gotcha. Hopefully, colors and textures, distinct left and right eyes. What was that it? There's mirroring. Rotate. Here it is, rotate. Screen orientation is specified with the rotate keyword with the values from zero to three. Default is three. Uh, this can be helpful if you split your monster mask in two. Sometimes the mask halves will fit into a better project if they are rotated 90 degrees. 
So you can actually add the rotate value to either the left or right. So you can have one eye be this way and the other one be that way. Yeah. So you have a lot of customization. Great note, uh, this one here actually uses the rotate, I believe. Oh. Yeah, this one actually uses rotate as well because mm -hmm. of the way they're oriented. Yeah, and like so you said, our antenna eyes as well has the rotate code. But it's really specific to that project. So you want to play with those zero, one, two, and three are the options. Um, I don't know what they are because it kind of doesn't matter. It, it's very specific to whatever the project is. So mm -hmm. check it out. Screen orientation is where you want to look at. And it's right here in the distinct left or right eyes, which is a part of the configuration settings. Can you grab that link? I sure can. Where do you want in it? In the Discord. Discord away. Yeah, shout out to Phil B for being so proactive on making sure the guide has the latest uh, kind of configuration stuff. And I think that was only added because of the antenna eyes project. Otherwise, we were cool with having the eyes go like that. <laughs> I just love this thing in the background. That <laughs> looks great. Uh, we kind of ripped them out of the, the alligator dragon here, which we'll show off, I guess, next. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We didn't talk about book. So last year, two years ago, Hocus Pocus is the awesome movie. Check it out. This is supposed this to is be book. the section on uh, you run out of time. Yeah, Shop Talk. You oh. run out of Halloween uh, time to get your project. What can you do? stick your eyes into? And one of them is this really cool you have to... book from Hocus Pocus. Yeah, let's turn it on. So uh, this is a learn guide that Paige and Brandy put together um, last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uses Velcro to secure this Halloween. We just cut out. This is a real book. <laughs> Cut, cut this out. There's no printing here. This is the plastic guy. Huge shout out to John Sampson, who might be in the chat. He's definitely in Discord. Check him out. He wrote some really cool uh, NeoPixel animation code that runs with the Halloween. We showed it last week. Well, this week, we have it in a project. So I'll put that guy in there. Put it in there. Uh, let's see what the battery is. I think it's like a little 420 milliamp battery. So I have that in the background there. I'll just put that there. Close the book up. Now I have um, a heart beating animation to go with. Where's the heartbeat? There it goes. To go with uh, the eye. It looks really, really great with low lighting. Like my whole hand lights up and it's really bright in here so it's kind of hard but it really adds so much life uh, to your project when you have the side light NeoPixels. So mm -hmm. the, the Halloween M4 is what this is. It's, it's updated from the Halloween M0. So it's got more RAM, it's got more flash. And it's got a way better display. It's uh, the, the IPS 240 by 240 pixel display. And uh, that just looks amazing. So you can customize. This is using the same code base as the monster mask. So you can customize the eyes, the iris, this blinking, and now the NeoPixel animations, which is great. So huge shout out to John Sampson, contributor on GitHub and Discord chat room member. Let's check out his learn, his learn GitHub. He, uh, John also added some new functionality. I haven't had a chance to play with it, but apparently it now has improved capacitive touch control with rainbow code. So check out John's uh, fork of the M4 eyes. You can have the, you can uh, play around with his code as well. So uh, shout out to you, John. Very, very awesome. I think we're gonna keep it in here like that. Very, very nice. So the Halloween eye, if you're looking for the eyes with a little bit of extra light, you can now uh, use it. Very cool. Arish is asking, does it have gyroscope? The monster mask does have a- It has an accelerometer. Accelerometer. Yeah, the LIS3DH. So one of the cool projects that are listed in the GitHub for that is the googly eyes. So when you jump up and down, the eyes will jiggle around based yeah. on where you're moving them. That's right. Let's head over to the learn guide and look for uh, Halloween M0. M0. And I think that's one of the projects where you shake it. You can have it be the display that just has eye movements and somebody just added the ability to use the AMG thermal infrared camera mm -hmm. so the eye will follow oh, where gosh. heated objects are. So that was uh, tweeted out I think yesterday with the GitHub code to that. So there is a ton of stuff you can add and it sounds like you're really new to what this monster mask thing is. I would suggest checking out the entire product page and just searching learn because you could have it do audio voice changer while it's running the I code. Yeah. You can have it run new pixels. You can have it run servos. There's the googly. No, it's a different one. 
there's there's a good amount here. It <laughs> does way more than just display eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. So if you take a look at the screen here that we're showing, this is the learn guide that has mm -hmm. all the different projects that have been made with the monster mask. You could also uh, look at, you could display GIFs as well if you just want to display some, some, mm -hmm. GIF some GIFs or GIFs. 3D printed cases for it. Right. There's John a did stuff. a really cool one where you shake it and it's like a magic eight ball. Mm, that's that funny. one uses that the accelerometer. Sweet. That sounds like, oh, let me look at that. This one also, does this one, it's like a maze. You move it around with the accelerometer, you can... Yeah, you can make a Ouija board. A Ouija board. Um, that's with the M0. It should work with the M4 mm -hmm. as well, if little not faster. Uh, a little 3D, uh, it's a little kind of men Minotaur maze mm -hmm. that you can control with the accelerometer. Here it is, Halloween Magic 9 Ball, where you shake it and it gives you like a, a yes or no type answer mm -hmm. and you can change the graphics. And the other one that I just skipped over, oh boy. Ah, there it is, the search. No. There, the, I just saw the googly eye one. There it is, Halloween there googly is. eye. You shake it and it bounces back in now. That's so freaking cool. That is great. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so check it out. This one uses the Halloween M0, but you could use the M4 as well. Very cool. So cool. There we go. Tons of different. Oh, that was a good question. Uh, it's a good to look at the. The only hard part is yeah. going to be what project you actually do with this. You know, because <laughs> there's just so many things you can do with it. Yeah. You got to like settle on oh, no, one. Oh too many. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we got to settle on one. What do you really, really want to do? Yeah. Whatever drives you. Cool. All right. So we went over the. Oh no, uh, community makes. Yep. This week's time lapse Tuesday. Yeah, I got it loaded for you. This is a sweet. Dragon, the uh, Dungeons and Dragon Black Dragon Skull. I should have printed it in black, but I wanted to mm -hmm. use up this green that we have left. So what I'm doing here is vase mode. So it's like one perimeter thick and it printed in, I think 16 hours, this ginormous 300, <laughs> what did it say? 360 millimeter tall, huge dragon skull. Yeah. And then we're simply just adding the monster masks on here. We did the exact same foam core setup that you were showing off with the skull mask back there. I just set it up on the inside of this mm -hmm. hollow um, dragon skull. Dry ice, right? Dry ice right in the middle of that, or right inside of it, so it would come out it's of the It's completely hollow and chopped from the hollow. bottom. Yeah. So this is where, you know, I always see people using vase mode to make a vase, but you could also print out this ginormous freaking dragon. Huge. Yeah. And what's cool about it is he uploaded it as this little teeny tiny thing for SLA printing. So resin printer right. is what he was using this on. So I uploaded a remix of it that has all of the insides where the eyes and the nose, like when you model stuff. That's right. Um, he did this in ZBrush. So when you model like eyes, you actually have to punch through the, the face. And there's like these protrusions. You can kind of see it on the, if you go to the overhead here. There's protrusions that end up on in the center of the head. So I just cleaned those up inside of Mesh Mixer, ripped those out. The only thing that I left on there were the eyes and the nose. And that was pretty much just for like support material. So it wouldn't right. you know, have so much trouble with all the overhangs. Since it's printing vertically up this way, there's a ton of uh, overhangs that's going on. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that the eyes, the sockets at least, uh, were able to hold its shape. And jump back over the other one. Are you able to print it with more shells or is one? So I up? should have done that actually. I should have did it with like three shells just because it's so thin and some spots here you can kind of see that there's holes, especially around the uh, the nose bridge area yeah. here. Okay. So that definitely would have helped. But it's more of a test. It's like, yeah, hey, it was more of a test. test I this. did not think this was going to print out as, right. good, it did. as, mm -hmm. as, it, as good as it did. All right. Good, but you can kind of see the inside print. there. We're just using the uh, the outline for where the screens are on the monster mask, and right. we're just press fitting those inside there. Yeah. And then the, I just cut out a little circle out so we would um, stay mm -hmm. masked out away from the the light leaking. Yeah. The, uh, the light leaking. The edges and the of the screen. Edges of the screen. Cool. Yeah, and because it's time lapsed, uh, you, you reduce a little bit of the quality because it's the park itself. And funny oh, note yeah, is yeah, that yeah. it's such a giant thing that it was triggering. That's huge. The mechanical switch. Yeah, it's freaking huge. <laughs> the way Octoprint, Octo, Octo plugin, lapse, yeah. Octolapse is set up is you, you have a special spot where it's supposed to trigger the lens, and it's such a big thing that it triggered 
mm -hmm. it triggered it. Um, okay, cool. And cool. Uh, we took the eyes out because uh, we repurposed them. Yeah, I don't want to split up another I know. pair of them. I know. This was cool. You could kind of, something else. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a good method because then you're not permanently stuck inside one project. You can pop exactly. them out, which is what we did. You could pop them out of here as well. They're not the, the thing that's hot glued is the foam core, the foam core that's holding and the it EVA up. foam, not the actual PCB. That is not hot glued. It is just yeah. pressed in with a nice snug fit. So definitely yeah. check out. Blue fruit. This model if you need to oh, yeah. have a dragon skull <laughs> in your Halloween theme. Yeah, here's the uh, the final design. Here's what it looks like with the SLA printed, yeah. or the resin printers. Yeah, lots so, of supports there. Uh, you can be assured that it'll print on all types of printers. Rawr. Pretty cool. Super cool. I really like the shape of uh, how the horns are coming down that way. So cool. Cool, and Pedro put a link to the Hocus Pocus book right there in Discord. Let's check it out. Well, that's a good idea. David Smith is saying that maybe uh, paper mache over the three printed model. Oh, that's brilliant. That way you can that cover it really up good and add idea. some more kind of layers to it. Yeah, like textures it. and things yeah. like that. That's a cool idea. That is so cool. Yeah, man. Arish is asking who designed this. This is from, if you click on the name there, it'll tell you it's Gunther, Gunther Betty. Betty. Gunther Betty. And he's Betty. on Twitter. Yep, so he used uh, any tube yeah. photon and he modeled this in ZBrush. Sweet. This looks so cool. Excellent. excellent, excellent design. Yeah, very fun. Uh, Arish is also asking, the vapor material, it is just dry ice. You can rewind to the beginning of the video. We had an entire segment on it. Yeah. So you can cool. check it out. It is available at like grocery stores or like bait and tackle shops, uh, like around where people fish. Yeah. Or do a, a search around your local mm -hmm. um, area, maybe and Google Maps or something. Like we were saying before, they also sell like fog uh, in a, spray can yeah like doing some okay. cinematography and uh, video production yep. we briefly so looked at can. atomizer humidifiers as well that just takes water and creates water vapor mm -hmm. if you want to create something a little bit more safer and less uh less involved check out the atomizer humidifiers on amazon sweet going through yeah, we got 10 minutes chats. left we're oh. good irish is saying that he just purchased a bunch of them awesome yay Definitely nice. share your awesome creations with us on Twitter. Yeah, and later tonight, see. we hope to see you guys out there. Uh, we're going to do show and tell yes. tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We do this every Wednesday. All participants get a free show and tell sticker. So you can put that on your projects or adorn it on whatever you like. Yes. And then shortly after that, we have Ask an Engineer, Return of Lamar and Phil. Last week, we had Ada Box unboxing with John Pack. This, or did we do that last week or the other week? I think it was a week before. Okay, sorry. Before. So definitely <laughs> check back two weeks before if you want to see an entire unboxing, all the cool projects for Monster Mask. And, and don't forget detail. the time is the clicking. Where yeah, is it? Yeah, we're right, <laughs> right smack here. in the middle of Halloween. We're already planning Christmas stuff, so. Some 53 sure days left. Oh yeah, this. We'd we really, have a new counter. We yeah. have a new counter for Adabox, Thank the you. next Adabox. Yeah. 14. So get on there. Don't days. wait a day before. Get on it now, please. It ships December. It's the best way to Whoa. secure <laughs> your gonna get something that's totally gonna be out of stock. So really appreciate if you guys. Best way to get it. Do it. So definitely sign up for that. They we will run out way before that. We so run out. definitely <laughs> get on that quickly. Cool. I'm still surprised the blue fruits in stock. I know, right? They won't be by the end of the show. <laughs> 25 in stock. Well, thank you. Yeah, if you guys follow the GitHubs, was it Lamar Phil who posted it? Looks like uh, Make Code's already working on their build for, for Bluetooth? setting up blue fruits. So this might be the quickest, easiest way to make a Bluetooth HID. I can't wait. We've been waiting so long to get something that's better than the easy key. Oh, man. Some folks are like holding on to that one. Are saying the video going to be available afterwards? Yes, it's saved as an archive. Yes, you can Whoops. rewind all the way back. Uh, don't forget, we also have a CAD model of all the products that we talked about, including the Blue Fruit and the Monster Mask. Yep, all free to download. You can get these in any format: IGS, Step, STL, Step, FXB, yes. or FBX. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? I like Step. Step is a really good DMX. format. DMX. Get all those. And it's been me right round. All right, well, that's going to be it from us. Don't forget, later tonight, show and tells and ask an engineers. 
and then somebody please call in and win something. Um, oh yeah, yeah, there's a phone number. There's you guys a phone can number call you call in. in. Um, it, uh, the only People thing usually fits. win whatever the new product of the week is, so you don't want to miss that. Yeah, I wonder what it's going to be. Let's, let's see. Let's yeah. really quickly. What's a cool browse. new thing coming out this week? A what? robot. Check <laughs> out these ultra skinny NeoPixels. Holy crap! I already have ideas for this one. Yeah. Look how tiny they are. Yeah, they're Ooh. 15, 15 size. That's ridiculously small. Yeah, the, you, you know the, the the NeoPixel dot star. That's wait, wait, are these NeoPixels or the dot stars? Because they look like the dot stars that are on the little Gemma boards. Mm. They're so small, They're so tiny. They're the size of a cap. Yeah. Jeez. Sign up if you There's want to be alerted. There's only two pads for soldering. Where's the third pad on the on the end? They don't break out all the pads. I'm confused. How's this working? Uh, we'll tomorrow, we'll talk about. Yeah, it we'll have to find out <laughs> later. I don't. I only see two pads. Stay tuned. They Here are tonight. NeoPixel. We'll find out. They have three wires. I can see there. Huh. All right, we've got to close out the show. Yeah, it's yeah, time sorry. for lunch. Like, <laughs> yeah. We'll right, find well, out later tonight. Thank you so tonight. much again. Blue Fruit is the coupon code. There's another one today. And maybe we'll have one. Yes, we'll have one tomorrow with John Park. So check out John Park's workshop every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Definitely. That's going to be it from us. We'll see you later tonight, like we said. And don't forget to... Something. Don't forget to make a great day. Bye, folks. See you later tonight. Peace. Thank you.